Have you ever wondered how we acquire a new language? How do we go from not understanding a word to being able to communicate fluently? Well, one theory that attempts to explain this process is the input hypothesis proposed by linguist Stephen Krashen. In a nutshell, the input hypothesis suggests that language learners improve and progress in their language ability by understanding language input that is slightly above their current level. This concept is often represented as I plus one. Here, the I stands for the learner's current language competence, the level of language they can comfortably understand and use. The plus one, on the other hand, represents the next stage of language acquisition, the slightly more advanced language that the learner is striving to understand and use. So, to put it simply, the input hypothesis suggests that we learn a language by being exposed to language that is slightly more advanced than our current level of understanding. On the other hand, have you ever thought about the importance of actually using the language you're learning? This is where the output hypothesis comes into play. The output hypothesis is a theory proposed by Merrill Swain. It suggests that learners can enhance their language ability by producing language output. So what does this mean? Well, when learners actively use the language, they get to notice the gaps in their linguistic knowledge. It's like trying to solve a puzzle. As you place the pieces together, you realize what's missing. This realization then stimulates the development of syntax and semantics, the structure and meaning of language. It's a fascinating process, really, like a self-correcting mechanism that's triggered when we attempt to express our thoughts and ideas. In essence, the output hypothesis suggests that practice, or output, is equally as important as input when it comes to language learning. Now that we understand these theories, how can we apply them in the language classroom? Let's delve into some practical ways to implement input and output activities in your lessons. For input, consider activities that will expose your students to language slightly above their current level. This could be reading texts with a few unfamiliar words or listening to dialogues that challenge their comprehension. On the other hand, for output, we want to encourage students to produce language. This can be achieved through activities that stimulate conversation, such as group discussions on interesting topics, presentations on subjects they are passionate about, or role plays where they get to step into someone else's shoes. Remember, the goal is not perfection, but progression. Encourage your students to take risks with language and make mistakes. It's through these errors that they learn and grow. By balancing input and output activities in the classroom, we can create an optimal environment for language acquisition. So what are the key takeaways from today's discussion? We've delved into the input hypothesis, which underscores the role of comprehensible input in language learning. Then we explored the output hypothesis, highlighting how language production aids in acquiring linguistic knowledge. We also talked about practical ways to integrate these hypotheses in the classroom, like using engaging reading materials or prompting students to speak. Remember, both input and output are crucial for language acquisition. By understanding and applying these theories, we can enhance our teaching strategies and help our students learn more effectively.